we see a tremendous energy source in geothermal. The deep drilling for oil and gas has shown that there's geothermal energy across the whole U.S. Boise, Idaho started their geothermal program in 1890. Right now they're heating the whole downtown area, the state capital complex, the VA hospital complex, and about 600 homes in Boise. The geysers in California north of San Francisco is producing about 2,600 megawatts of power right now, enough to power almost all of San Francisco. Imperial Valley is producing somewhere around 8 to 900 megawatts. California leads in the geothermal energy production. There's been estimated through the Texas area in Mississippi, other areas down through the Gulf states, about anywhere from seven to 10,000 megawatts of power that could be available by using some of the technology we have in generating electricity from essentially hot rocks. There's some real potential, not only in domestic in the U.S., but you look at countries like Indonesia. The World Geothermal Conference in Indonesia stated that we are going to be the largest producer of geothermal. We're gonna supply our own nation with geothermal. They've got an aggressive program, the Philippines the same way, all the way down South America from Colombia, there's what they call a ring of fire on the, the western slope of Chile all the way up through South America. It's got a new thrust going in to do development of geothermal. Lardarello, Italy has produced geothermal energy since 1911. Uh, new Zealand has been very high in geothermal energy. Iceland has developed a lot of energy. So worldwide, we see a lot of energy. To be able to do this, we have to understand the subsurface, the geology, the geophysics, the, the, the water systems, and the environmental impacts that we may see relative to development. Is there any sensitive systems in the area? A huge volcanic eruption that happened 630,000 years ago created a thermal system here in Yellowstone that is world renowned. Yellowstone Lake basically has a huge thermal system beneath it. And it's being studied by scientists from all over the world. So it's been protected through the national park system as our first national park. And as a result, we have a perfect place to study that in its natural state, to know what we have prior to development, and at the same time, doing it in a conscientious, environmentally safe way. A lot of places, the wells drill, the fields develop, the uh, subsurface geology known, the binary power plant that would fit well with these. There's a tremendous amount of energy that's been drilled into these oil and gas fields that right now, through the extraction of oil and gas, is bringing up hot water. Several companies have power plants that work on temperatures in the range of the 200 degrees Fahrenheit to all the way down to almost 160 degrees Fahrenheit. We could take that energy and and produce electrical energy from the hot water and still save the oil and gas through the separation process. High temperature hydrothermal sites in some cases are not located close to a uh, power transmission system and the cost of getting power transmission to the grid from a geothermal site often gets it into a state that it's not competitive with respect to the going price. And in some cases maybe that power could go to the grid to the cities, in other cases maybe it could just go to help power the pumps to bring more of the oil and gas up. So we can plug in these new plants and new technologies into these systems. But I think the difficulty is matching up the oil industry that knows how to produce oil out of these systems with the geothermal industry that knows how to build a power plant that could supply it. We know how to develop it, but we've really only tapped a very small piece of the potential we have across the U.S. If we look at geothermal now, it's probably only 2% of the energy. Ideally, we could supply 100%. The shallow hydrothermal temperature systems like we see in Yellowstone, industry knows how to do that. It's all like picking the, the low-hanging fruit. The other area is what we call enhanced geothermal systems or engineered geothermal systems. And a recent report by Massachusetts Institute of Technology shows that we have a tremendous potential across the whole U.S. There we really have to generate the permeability in the subsurface to circulate the water or the fluids through the hot rock to extract the energy. That in itself from the MIT report has enough energy to supply the total energy use of the U.S. The ones that have the technical challenges are still the enhanced geothermal engineered systems, the oil and gas separation to know better the subsurface systems, and some of these deep geopressure systems. We have both high pressure, we have hot water, and we have methane. The universities play a critical role in giving us those answers. And honestly, without the geothermal program in Washington, D.C., there's not going to be that research dollar available to support the university researchers. We're facing some critical times within our nation's energy. 
internationally as well as domestically, there's going to be some real opportunities for the people studying geothermal relative to the subsurface, the subsurface geology, the geophysics, the geochemistry, the geosciences. So we can build a power fence, we still have a problem understanding the fracture nature of these volcanic systems in the subsurface. And I think there's where the opportunity is.